Our next oration bears the title, Will AI Work for Us or Will We Work for AI? Discerning and Responding to the Future of Work and AI. Please welcome Colin Linter. Check. Okay. Why do we work? Think about it. Is it just for our money? Or do we work for something greater or more meaningful? How we answer these questions can determine our general mindset and attitude towards the rest of our life. We can see this by how we organize our lives. Our days are scheduled around what hours we are working. Our weeks are scheduled around what days we are working. Our years are scheduled around what weeks we are working. You get the point. Work is critically important for humans as it at least provides a set schedule for us among other benefits like an income, human relations, and a sense of purpose. But artificial intelligence is ready to take it all away. Work as we know it started in the Industrial Revolution with the invention of new machines and methods to get our work done more efficiently with the same or fewer people. The power loom, a machine designed to weave textiles, uh, exemplified this since more people could monitor the machine and make sure it was working properly while the machine took the brunt of the manual labor away from the workers and was more productive. This shows how the machine could work alongside humans as tools in our work to get our work done faster and create more jobs. But artificial intelligence or AI is threatening to ruin our working conditions. Unlike the machines of the Industrial Revolution, AI does not assist humans in our work as tools, but replaces us. For our purposes, AI is a computer system meant to perform human tasks that would normally require a human's intelligence. We have seen many achievements for AI on the news, like when it beat the reigning world champion in chess or even the game Go. One AI program created by IBM named Watson beat the world champion in the popular quiz show Jeopardy, showing how AI can learn to tip, tackle difficult and complex questions and formulate appropriate responses better than most humans. AI's capabilities have only increased and it is getting exponentially smarter as companies continue to develop it. Once AI can achieve a near human level of intelligence, which has already been done in some cases, we might not be able to work due to the fact that employers have to pay humans but not robots. And the jobs that AI will take will not be limited to just blue collar jobs like manufacturing, but also higher level, even white collar jobs like management. This will affect our society in ways that no one could predict. How would we handle leaving behind our work after we've seen how much it has a hand in our lives? How would we survive without any chance of a work income? The list goes on, and once AI is ready, it will not only take our current jobs, but the few that it creates. Some might argue at this point that this realization is pointless, since there is nothing we can do to stop or avert this disaster. We live in a capitalist economy, which allows businesses to do whatever they will within certain regulations and most of the research in AI is done within these private companies like IBM or Google. This argument correctly recognizes that neither the ordinary citizen nor the government can really do much to change these massive companies. But there are some ways in which the government can help our cause. Government regulations were originally set up to make sure that private companies didn't mistreat the environment, their employees, or their customers. The government could very well set up a new regulation to monitor and hamper AI integration in the workforce since it will be such a problem for America. Another method the government could use was demonstrated with the Theodore Roosevelt administration and the anthracite coal strike of 1902. America was coming into a harsh winter and several thousands of coal miners decided to go on strike to bargain for better wages, hours, and working conditions. Eventually, they stopped working long enough that a coal shortage had begun, and prices had started to dramatically rise for coal. At this point, Roosevelt had to start seriously worrying about the general public, 
most of whom might have not been able to pay for such high prices for coal and heating over this harsh winter. So, to combat this, he decided to threaten the mine operators with seizing their privately owned mines with federal troops. Fortunately, the mine operators backed down. But this story shows how in times when the American people are in a dangerous or desperate situation, the president can and must protect the people at any cost. Our work is far too important and far too valuable to give up. And AI is too much of a threat to shrug off. We may soon come to a point where government intervention is necessary. Meanwhile, enjoy your work and the benefits it provides, for we only have a limited time before AI starts to affect our own personal vocations. Be prepared to combat these changes by learning new skills that AI cannot yet replicate, like learning how to learn. Pray that our government and private companies are wise with their decision making about this topic. And let us, rather than AI, remain in control of our work. Thank you.